So I was going to put binary arithmetic into a single video, but unfortunately the video turned out to be too long, so I have to divide it into two parts. So we are going to start with this video for binary addition and subtraction. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract in binary using the twos complement and how overflow works in binary arithmetic. But first, I need to explain to you what significant bits are. For significant bits, there are only two things that you need to know. You need to know the most significant bit and the least significant bit. In a binary number, the most significant bit, known as the MSB, is the leftmost bit. And the least significant bit, known as the LSB, is the rightmost bit. So, for example, in this problem here, the 1 in this binary number is the least significant bit. Okay, so now that we're done with that, let's move on to binary addition. In both binary addition and subtraction, we need to think of a few things. First, we need to think of how many bits that we need in the problem. Next, we need to know which numbers are positive and negative. And finally, in binary arithmetic, we must assume that all numbers, well, in most of the courses anyways, are signed rather than unsigned. But of course, another question being, are the numbers signed or unsigned? Now, for those of you who do not know, signed means that the leftmost bit is either a plus or a minus, positive or negative, zero or one. And unsigned means that the leftmost bit is part of the number. Let's take a look at a sample problem here. I'm going to look at 13 plus 14. And in this problem, I'm going to want the answer in the format of 8 bits. Well, the first thing that I have to do is convert the numbers 13 and 14 to binary. And I suggest you go back to the first video if you do not know how to convert from decimal to binary yet. So we're going to go ahead and convert 13 to binary like so. We got 00001101. And then we are going to convert 14 to binary, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Next, much like we do in elementary school math, we're going to start adding them up. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. No problems there. Now, 1 plus 1 is, in binary terms, 10. So what we do, just like in elementary school math, is place the 0 down as the answer. And then we are going to carry the 1. And now we're going to the next one. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11, so just put the 1 down and carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1, and then, of course, zeros for the rest of them. And we are left with 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and if you transfer that to decimal format, you will find that is 27. How you did addition in grade school is exactly how you do binary addition here. Adding up 1 and 1 together makes 1, 0. You just put the 0 as the result and you carry the 1. Adding up 3 1's together makes 1, 1. Again, you carry the 1. Adding up 4 1's together will give you 1, 0, 0. You carry the 1, 0, which means that a 1 will automatically be carried over to the next place. Okay, so addition was easy enough, so let's take a look at subtraction. We're going to subtract 27 to 21 and we're going to have 8 bits. So let's go ahead and represent 27 as a binary number, and we got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And now we will go ahead and represent 21 as a binary number, and that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now that we have that done, let's start subtracting. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. Now, 0 minus 1. Obviously, you cannot subtract 1 from 0, so what you have to do is borrow from the other place, much like you do in elementary school math. So we're going to borrow the 1 from the more significant bit, and now we got 1, 0 minus 1, which is 1, 0 minus 0 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, and so on. And we are left with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, which in decimal form is the number 6. Now in some cases involving addition and subtraction, you will come across a number that is too big for the number of bits that it holds. This is called overflow. The thing is that an n-bit sign number can only hold numbers from negative 2 to the n minus 1, the number of bits that make a number, to 2 to the n minus 1th power 
minus 1, or in this case, negative 128 to 127 for 8 bits. To determine overflow, the sign bit of the second number and the results are used. In addition, if they are equal, there is no overflow, and there is overflow if it is different. In subtraction, it is the opposite. A good rule of thumb for subtraction, simply invert the second number, the subtrahend, and add the two numbers after that. Then follow the same overflow rules as addition. All right, so let's try adding two negative numbers together. We are going to add negative 7 and negative 11. And to show an overflow example, I am going to use 5 bits. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take the numbers 7 and 11 and invert them. First, we will take the number 7. Then we are going to invert all the bits. And then we are going to add 1 to get our 2's complement number. And then we will do the same for 11, like so. All right, now it is time to do the negative number adding. So, 1 plus 1 equals 10. We'll take the 0, and then we will carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 makes 1. 0 plus 1 makes 1. 1 plus 0 makes 1. And 1 plus 1 makes 10, but we only have the 0 here because we don't have another bit to place the 1 on, so we just drop it. Notice that the most significant bit of our addend, the 1, is different from the most significant bit from our result, which is 0. This indicates an overflow, and thus the answer is not 01110, at least not in the 5-bit sense anyway. Finally, let's take our same problem, invert the second number, our addend, so now it is a subtrahend, and now what we are going to do is we're going to subtract 11 from negative 7, again using 5 bits. So let's go ahead and repeat the inversion of the number 7 like we were going to do. So we have negative 7 in our 2's complement form. And then we're just going to leave 11 alone since it is a positive number, and we're going to subtract these two numbers. Okay, so we have 1 minus 1 makes 0. Like in the previous problem, we cannot subtract 1 into 0, so we must borrow from the more significant bit. Well, the next most significant bit, which is the 0, cannot be borrowed from either, so we must grab it from the other next significant bit. We continue this cycle of searching through the more significant bit until we come across a 1. So what we are going to do first is borrow the 1 from the least possible significant bit, which is this second bit right here, and then we are going to move it to the third bit. And then from there, we are going to have the fourth bit borrow from the third bit, which leaves us with a 1 on the third bit and a 1, 0 on the fourth bit. Now we can continue. 1, 0 minus 1 makes 1. 10 minus 1 makes 1, whichever way you want to say it. 1 minus 0 makes 1. And now we come across another 0 minus 1, so we will have to borrow from the least significant bit, like so. And we will have 1, 0 minus 1 makes 1, and finally 0 minus 0 makes 0. Now notice that the second number, the subtrahend, is the exact same bit as the most significant bit of our result. This indicates an overflow. Remember the rules for subtraction. The same for the subtrahend and the result, indicates an overflow, different indicates no overflow. Okay, so that ends our video. We covered a lot of material in such a short time, and we're going to cover even more material with binary multiplication and division next time. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.